Everybody, we're so glad that you're here today, and we have an incredible show just for you. So you need to call your friends, you need to call your sister, you need to call your mom, call everybody, because we're going to have an incredible time. I'm here with my daughter, Ashley, and our guest today is the one and only Naomi Rain of Maverick City. I am so excited. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm excited. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Job? Oh, she's you high. are enough. Yeah, I was like, when I, I almost jumped in with you with the key. That I was a high key. <laughs> Very amazing, ambitious. amazing. Thank you for being here. You just got off the tour bus, literally, wow. right? Yes. And you've been on tour for how many cities? Thirty-six cities. Wow. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. And I'm glad to be going home. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming, and we just want to get to know you. We want to get to know you. I'm sure. Don't you guys want to get to know her? Yes, yes. I know you do. Yes. I know you do. We're going to okay. ask you a few questions. All right. Just to get us warmed up. A few questions. We call this the lightning round. <laughs> okay. With, with you can Ms. Do it. Naomi. Don't be nervous. These are, yeah, these are fun. Okay. Okay. First question. Who is your hero? Oh, my hero is my mommy. Oh, my mom, good. her name is Marissa, and Aww. she's like Hi, the Marissa. bestest ever. And cool. yep, my mommy is my hero. That's cool. a good one. Okay, favorite movie of all time. Okay, this is difficult, yes. but I'm going to go with The Five Heartbeats. Okay. Oh, I love a musical. Yeah. It was almost between that and The Jackson Five American Dream. Yes. Okay. That okay. was one of my favorites. Yes, good. Yeah. Five Heartbeats, great. Okay, how old were you when you first started singing, if you can even remember? Honestly, two. I sang for the first time at two years old oh. at a Hezekiah Walker concert. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Actually, at a concert? What did That's you sing? Yes, really I impressive. sang Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> and you were two? <laughs> and I was two, and it was like after midnight. Wow. And my mom was like, do you want to go home? Sorry, it's a lightning round. I will go. <laughs> there you go. We can come back it. to that. I love this. Um, okay, next question. Favorite place to visit? Las Vegas. Vegas. Mm. I feel bad about that. That's I never want to admit it. Do you need to repent now or what? No, no. it's because of the shows. The shows. Like, yes. I love the show. So good at home too. Yeah. Good food. Yeah. You know, I love a meal and a show. <laughs> a good meal and a show. Me. That's, That's a great it. answer. Okay. Answer. Um, let's see. What gets you excited? I guess food. It's, it's food. really food, and I'm so sad that I'm saying that. <laughs> but honestly, I really do. I love, um, I love worship nights. I hate to be like cliche, but I no, love to good. be in the presence of God and to sing and to just worship with people corporately. Mm -hmm. That gets me excited. Awesome. Who's good someone answer. that you really want to meet that you haven't gotten to meet yet? Well, I'm sitting here with one. Um, um, Me? Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yes, oh my God. You know what? I will say this. They're not that's alive, like, but oh. the person that, oh, maybe I should choose somebody who's alive. It's okay. But I would have really wanted to meet Michael Jackson. That was one mm, of my um, dreams. But I love John Bellion. He's a producer and a songwriter and a singer from Long Island. And he's a Christian. And I feel like his work is just super amazing. So that's awesome. somebody else. That's okay. awesome. Great, great, great. Okay, one last question. Um, who's your favorite artist? Brandy. Very good. <laughs> Great answers. Oh. Okay. I feel like we've gotten to know you a little bit. I nice. really try to be disciplined because I have like a million <laughs> answers for every question. They're they're hard to answer some of those simple questions. Yeah. Like favorite movies. There's yes. So many good yes. ones. Okay, so tell us more about you. Now you're from I'm from New York, from New York City. New York City. Born and raised in Queens. Okay. And yeah, I've been there for <laughs> my whole life and I'm never leaving. You know, like, no, the Lord really has to send Gabriel or something <laughs> to tell me to yeah, leave no. <laughs> for me to go. Okay, yeah. okay. And you did your first song or should I say solo at two? Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you've always loved singing? Always. My parents are singers. I feel like I got it naturally. Um, and just, I grew up in rehearsal, so yeah. <laughs> it was just a part of my life. So I heard that your parents, um, they both sang worship or led worship, should mm -hmm. I say? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Artists and songwriters. Like I literally, I remember my greatest memories are being upstairs, cleaning my room, or doing homework. But they're downstairs, like rehearsing a song or writing a song and showing each other the song. And so that I literally grew up 
with that my whole okay. life. Okay, okay, awesome. So growing up, having parents as worship leaders, what are some lessons you learned from them? Um, I think one of the major things I think I'll take, outside of like the practicality of it, mm -hmm. they, even though I don't rehearse as much as I probably should, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I just learned a great work ethic for music, how to apply yourself, surround yourself with it. Um, I learned how to be authentic. My dad and my mom, they, they, they were a duo, but they were themselves. I didn't. Mm. I don't feel like I saw them like try to be the other one or mm -hmm. right. do like a lot of competing. So it helped me to be myself. That's good. Um, but even outside of that, I think my parents were actually Christians. You know, yeah. like they really lived it. It wasn't just on a Sunday morning. It wasn't awesome. just when they were at That's a so gig good. or an event. Mm -hmm. They came home. We were in the car. We talked about God. We did. Wow. You know, they lived it out, and I saw them. Um, be real people. And when my dad messed up, he would apologize and be like, mm, wow. I, you know, I messed up and I love you or blah, blah, blah. You know, that yeah. was the type of stuff. So to me, it wasn't like, hey, we're just singing about something that we're not living. I right. feel like they taught me how to live what I'm singing. And of course, you know, nobody's perfect, but just to kind of like really love Jesus and what that looks like behind the scenes as well as like on stage. That's everything though. That is everything. That is <laughs> yeah. everything to see to see the life lived behind the gift, because you have a lot of gifts, but the thing Absolutely. that matters is the lifestyle you live behind the gift. So tell us about your family. So you're you're married, you have mm -hmm. children. How long have you been married? I've been married, we'll be 16 years in September. Wow, oh, congrats. Thank you. And I have three babies. Um, my daughter, April, is 16. Um, my son, Caden, is 13. And my son, Savion, is eight. Wow. wow, you got three kids. Three of them things. <laughs> <laughs> so are they musical as well or what? April is singing. Um, mm. My sons play instruments in school. Um, I don't know. The boys seem to lean more towards sports, but they do sing around the house. Okay. And like Savy, that's my littlest one. He's like... Mommy, are you going to sing Jari? He talks through his teeth. I don't know <laughs> if these teeth so will ever cute. open up, but at this That's point, so he's like, he's loving the songs. He's into them. You know, he okay. has favorite songs okay. and things. I don't know much else yeah. about him yeah. except video games and the yeah. few songs that he likes to sing. So we're, you know, I'm going to see. I'm not going to push cool. them, though. Cool. Right. I'm not going to force them into it. I'm going to no. see what See what happens, what, what they evolve into. How are they taking this success, seeing their mom traveling, seeing her on television, seeing all the great things that are happening. How are the kids taking it? <laughs> They're very chill. They're very chill? They're very chill. They're like, Mom, I saw you on, you know, or my, my daughter texted me the other day. She's like, I just listened to Journey and I love it. It's great. Aww. Thanks, Mom. She's like, thanks for being so real. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. It's like, so sweet. She, one day awesome. she texted me too. She's like, Mom, like, Sean Mendes knows who you are. And, you know, it's like Sean Mendes. I'm what? like, cool. well, thanks, April. She's like, you're cool. You say words like dope. I, I like that. You know, they're, but they're very like chill, like, you know. Yeah. But they well, make sure awesome. you know that they, they, see, yeah, they yeah. recognize it. They, they recognize it. They have a 16 year old say you're cool. That's pretty good. Yeah. You know, I think that's I'm pretty doing good. All right. yeah, I feel great. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, my son, I only have two, Al Alvin and Ashley, and uh, when they were little, you know, he was into every detail of everything. Oh, wow. You know, this one here, is this your last song? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't that She was it. not impressed at all. So one I was totally into it, and then one now. was. <laughs> but when I was little, I, yeah, I was. She was not just like, get me it. out like of here, Alvin get was, me out of here. Alvin was all the way into it. But um, <laughs> that that is awesome. And your husband, is he into music at all, or just he into is. you? He is. More into <laughs> me. <laughs> um, definitely. But he's like a big cheerleader Good. and used to rap back in the day. Oh, and okay. he's very, like, he loves music, avid music listener, more into like Christian hip hop. Okay. Um, awesome. And that sort of thing. But yeah, loves music. But he's more into me. Like, yeah, got it. Very good. Got it. Okay. So, how did Maverick City come about? How did you get connected? How? What's the whole story? So, ooh, it's a long story. And we depending on how you yeah, ask, we got time. you know, like origin stories change as yeah. time goes on because people, anyway, we have selective <laughs> memory. Yeah. But um, well, really, it started um, as a group of writers um, that just came together. And so I think they were they had maybe like one or two writing sessions um, before I came to be a part. But then we went to, I was invited um, to go to Bethel, um, the, their school, yeah, okay. and lead a worship set. And Chandler was there, Dante was invited as well. Um, 
uh, Jay Thomas. And so we were going there to do this worship set. While we were there, Tony Brown, who's the founder, and JJ, um, Jonathan Jay, who are the founders, were there as well. They were okay. writing with some Bethel people. And so they were like, hey, why don't we just like sing some of these songs that we've been writing? Have you written any songs? Let's get together and write. Okay. And let's just record it. And let's see what happens. Because you know how it is like right. as a songwriter. Um, Mitch Wong, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. I write with often, like uh -huh. we get together to write songs for artists to... Um, to, sing. to sing. And so we were saying, like, let's do these worship songs in an actual real worship environment. Let's get together in the room and just do it. And so that's what we did. But it wasn't a thing. It was just writers mm -hmm. singing songs. songs and right. um, recorded that. And about a week later, Tony sent us the videos and he was like, I think this is something. This is something. Mm. Um, <gasps> Are you serious? Yes. Yeah, you guys like blew up overnight, it seemed like. What was the process like? It was, was it literally no, overnight. It was, it it was, was literally over that. It was that. It was, wow. hey, look at these videos. I think this is something. I think we should release it. And we were like, okay, because like Dante's a singer, Chan's a singer, I'm right. a singer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and Chan wrote our first song, You're Welcome in This Place, at that I heard thing. that today. Beautiful. That's your first song? You That's wrote the together? first song we okay, wrote okay, together. Okay, okay, hold up. Let's go back. When did you start writing? When did you know you were a writer? When did I know I was a writer? Yeah. I, I, I wrote my first song when I was seven. Okay. And I remember it because I remember sharing it with a friend. <laughs> and I remember she, like, the whole class ended up singing the song oh, during wow. circle time. What, what, did it, what was it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember it. It goes, all right. it goes, everything begins with a seed and grows into an experience. Everything begins with a seed and grows into an experience. I have a verse. Oh, so you, got a verse. Verse. you got a verse too. It's What's the like, verse? like you were a baby and now you're a grown up. Like you were a seed and now you're a tree. Everything Aww, begins with a that's seed. That's awesome. So it was like a principle that they wow. taught us in school. And I wrote a song about it. And then we ended up singing, singing. it in circle time. And I was like, why do the people want to sing this? I remember thinking <laughs> oh, that. Wow. Um, Unbelievable. My parents bought me a keyboard when I was 10. And they were like, right, and a, and a whiteboard. Because mm -hmm. I'm a list maker. My husband calls me Listerine. Because <laughs> I will always like write a list. And so I would write out on my whiteboard the different songs that I've sung, uh -huh. um, that I had written. And I would just write it on my piano. That's awesome. And so I've been writing writing like since forever oh, and time. Yeah. So so you're writing you're singing these songs as a kid um like as a in, kid in writing, my room like that's what room. I did. Okay, what about when did you start like singing worship at your church? What I'm trying to get to is what were you doing before you got that call? to come to Bethel? Yeah, so I started singing in church, I probably was about 12. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. 12 or 11. But like in youth ministry, mm -hmm. um, and I think I was leading worship at 16 for for youth Got services it. and okay. stuff like that. Okay. And then I, well, when I was 18, I got pregnant um, before okay. my husband and I were married. So I got sat down for ministry. Okay. And that was like a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. It was like, Ugh, oh mm -hmm. no, like I can't sing anymore. Mm -hmm. But the Lord like use that time, I really started to write more songs and get into who he was, really learn about grace, really learn about forgiveness, really Got learn it. about mm. sin and all the things. Mm -hmm. And his love for me kept writing throughout that period. Um, and because I wasn't allowed to minister at my church right. anymore, right. I had gotten a call to minister somewhere else to be a choir director. And so that's really what started getting me like to be out comfortable there. being outside mm -hmm. of like where I was, mm -hmm. um, led worship. And then it was a Presbyterian church and they asked me to start leading worship. And so I was like leading worship and I don't know, like Presbyterian churches are not really like praise and worship. Right. 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 No. Yeah. Um, but it was there that God like started working with me in the prophetic. Cause I would start hmm. getting things and that I didn't know. I'm like, wow. why do I know this? But I'm like, God is saying he's going to heal people from blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then at the end of the service, they're like, that was me. Wow. Um, and so he used that that space. I kept singing, um, went to, um, I was still at my church. Um, okay. And they and they were, I was restored or whatever, but I was okay. still able awesome. to minister in these other places, AME churches. And the Lord really like just cultivated the gift of like being in different churches. Because yeah. that's a Which thing Which is good. Too, yep. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I started singing. Learn I was, how to minister to different people in different cultures. Exactly. And, awesome. and then I was still, okay, because I was 
not, I wasn't secular, but I was still like, well, maybe. <laughs> I had like a, like a plan A that my plan A was like, just sing for Jesus and do worship and stuff. But then plan B, C, D was like, okay, I went to you culinary a, school. I had, had a plan. B, C, and D. So, so B was what? Culinary school. I was going to be a chef. Okay. And then C was daycare. Like, just work okay. with these kids so you can still be with your kids yeah. and like work it out. Like, be a teacher. So I taught music in schools for a little while. I did like a few really? things. Wow, you did a lot. Yeah, but I came back because I was still I was singing background for um, an artist mm -hmm. and two days before we were supposed to leave to go to Japan and do this um, whole like European Asian tour, they canceled on us and told us like, we're not bringing singers. So I said, Dad, no, I no. went to Guitar Center. I'm like, I'm getting a guitar and I'm learning how to play the guitar. I went there, got my guitar, I was 25, um, started learning how to play the guitar, started writing on the guitar, Come and on. that wrote Pour Me Out, um, which mm. ended up singing that, and Todd Delaney wanted to cover it. So it was like the no, wow. right, of like, wow. you're not going out on tour with us, uh -huh. that got me to buy the guitar, write the Open song. The no, it came out of the no. It was the no. Wow, I love that. That's was so that good. your first song that another artist recorded? Yeah. Todd um, Delaney did Todd your Delaney. Really? Yeah. And he is so kind because he invited me up. He, he said to me, <laughs> he was like, I, I feel like this him. is a Diana Ross, like Michael Jackson thing. He was like, I want you to come and sing that night. Like, I want you to come. So he invited me out to Chicago mm -hmm. and I was able to like sing with him on Surrender It All that night. And it was like my first time singing like in a space like that yeah. where I was myself, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like a featured artist. And it was like special. And I was like, oh, I was just grateful to be a part of it. Cause yeah. that's, that's awesome. Know? That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, really, really huge. That's <laughs> awesome. So, so what was your connection to get you to Bethel? I had a, okay, it's story time. Come on, it's story okay. time. It's story time. So I was, um, all right. All right, okay. Um, so I was in with a group of people and working on music. You know how, I don't know if you like really know how this is, but you know you think something is going to go a certain way. Like God is going to use a certain avenue. Right. And so I was doing music with a group of people and I thought that that was going to be how God was going to do whatever he was going to do. And that went south. Like the Lord was like, don't do this anymore. And I was mm. like, I want to do the things. But I listened. I said no. Kind of got like ostracized and it was like a sad praise. I was very sad. Yeah. Um, after <laughs> that. Sad praise. <laughs> Girl, you sad. praised them either way. Man. Okay. I, I, I said I still bless I never, you. Right. But, sad um, in that. Wait, wait, wait. I never heard a sad praise. It was a sad praise. <laughs> It really is. Okay. There's such right. thing as a sad praise. So, no, there is. Yeah. We have to praise them in all the things. Absolutely. But a little while after that, I ended up getting Lyme disease randomly out of nowhere. Oh, wow. Yes, I'm telling you, it's story time. With that, <laughs> like, my body literally broke down, and the Lord was like, I'm going to teach you how to rest. Because mm. you think it's about you and what you can mm. do. I'm going to teach you how to rest. I was literally like, Lord, if I'm not going through this avenue mm. that you told me, like, if I can't work, like, if I can't sing, like, what is going to happen? Right. And he literally sat me down for uh, probably two or three months. Mm. And I would just, he's like, come into my presence. So I would just go into the presence of the Lord. He'd teach me about rest. I would spend time with him, commune with him. In that, mm -hmm. I learned, I really learned how to really listen to him. I was scrolling one day on Instagram, and mind you, I'm the type that scrolls and doesn't like like or mm -hmm. comment. I just want to see what everybody's doing. <laughs> but like, I know what's going on, but you don't know I know. Right. Um, which is shady. Anyway, I'm, I'm, new. I'm better now. But I was scrolling, and I saw that my friend, Alton, well, actually, he wasn't like a real friend. It was like a fake Instagram friend. Yeah. But we like talked on Instagram. <laughs> yes. And he, I saw That's that he was thing. doing the first, like, all black history month um, worship set at, at Bethel. Mm, wow. Right? And so I was like, oh, that's cool. And I, he, he had a choir, he, they, we were singing songs or whatever. And I was gonna scroll by and the Lord said, comment. So I, I did, mm -hmm. I was like, this is beautiful, this is dope. Mm -hmm. um, he hits me in the inbox and he's like, sis, you should come through. And I'm like, oh, what? Are I was you like, serious. I said, I'll 
all right. I was like, I'll come. Now, I was just coming to come because, mm-hmm. I, of course, I'm not doing anything. I got Lyme yeah. disease and I'm not. You're, you're in a season of rest. <laughs> okay. So I was like, I'll just come. Now, it's in California. I'm in okay, New York. Right, so I'm right. like, ooh, is, it's a flight. It's right. a, it's it's a, a real call. craze. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But um, listen to that. And then I was like, um, later, I was like, so who's singing? And he ended up telling me Dante and Chandler. I was like, you don't have any women singing? So I'm like, what about KCJ? He was like, why don't you come? And mm. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> and mind you, I was like, see, I never like speak up or say anything. Right. And I felt like that was a thing, but he invited me to come. And that's how that's wow. I got there. And the Lord literally said to me, He was like, you know, the world is bigger than this one avenue yes. of thought. Wow. If you so just good. rest in me and do what I tell you to do, I'll put you in positions. And even then, I still didn't know no. what was going to happen. But right. literally, me being in California. That night, wow. getting the the ask because Tony right didn't know place, me, JJ right didn't know me, nobody knew no, me. Yeah. I was just meeting Chandler for the first you. time, mm. right? Oh my goodness, that's amazing. That's what, what a like, great story. How do you feel? I'm like, I didn't do any of this. this. <laughs> I didn't do anything. <laughs> I just commented on a post. Oh my goodness, the Lord goodness. works their Instagram, guys. You commented on the post. <laughs> Amazing, because for you to sit here and tell me this story, I am like blown away, right? Yeah. Because you guys are so amazing. I just knew you and Chandler had grew up together. I <laughs> yeah, mean, the it seems blend, like there's history. Like, it really It does. seems like it is so much history. You know, coming from a family, you already know that sings. Mm-hmm. It's a blend, and it's a rhythm, and, yeah. and you guys have that. Mm-hmm. You guys have that in a huge way. So this is like a shock. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm still shocked. <laughs> I was about to say, what do you think it is that sets you guys apart? Because I don't know, there has been like this this strong like worship movement. And what do you think sets Maverick City apart? Like, what do you think it is? Other than, of course, God and like the Holy Spirit and his timing. Right. Like, do, what do you think there that sets you guys apart. If I could say the two things, because we do get this question a lot and mm-hmm. I've thought about it. Mm-hmm. I think there are two things. I think one, I think we just really want to worship. Mm-hmm. That's good. And we just do that. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, um, I, and I think at this point, the timing of it, people just want that. That. Yeah. You know, and they we love artistry. We love um Right. Like encouraging songs or whatever. But I think right now people want to know how they can worship God. And so when, when, yeah. And when we model that, it's just like, okay, I can get with that. Mm. But I think the other thing is that in the recordings, we don't doctor them up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when they try to put the the tune on it, you can really hear it. We sound, I'm not saying we sound a mess, but we don't sound like all, you know, pop. It's raw. And you can hear people's clothes rubbing together Mm -hmm. and people talking and shuffling. I think when people listen to our music, they feel like they're They're in the room. Uh And for Uh it to happen and people kind of like see it, it really, people started seeing it because Tony, our founder, wrote Good Good Father. Um, oh, wow. That song. So his friends, and the reason that he wanted wow. to start this was like, hey, I'm in writing rooms, but I don't see people that look like the whole church. I only yeah. see, really, it's yeah. white and Looks male, yeah, right? And it. so right. he was like, how do we get more females? Diversity. How do we get more colors yeah. in the room? Not to take out white men, no, 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 you know, no. but to bring them out. Right. Yeah. So that we can write songs that the whole church can sing because they came from the, the whole, whole church. church. That's good. That's right? Good. And so as That's that good. started to happen, happen, it was like, I think the songs started to represent more people and mm-hmm. people said, okay, I can get with this. So I really good. think God used it to just bring us together. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, right, um, right. but I think it's just, it's the heart behind it. It's a it. lot of people's cup of tea though. Y'all yes. have a huge <laughs> fan base. No, like you really do and people. I love it. Yeah. What, what have you learned about worship throughout your life and mm-hmm. since being a part of Maverick City music. What is like? What have you learned about worship? Hmm. I love that because I think I've had to unlearn. Mm. Yeah. What I That's what I believed or thought about worship, and even mm. though I think some of those things are still true, um, I think I've learned that what makes me, what makes us pure what makes us acceptable and all that. Because I think we think that in order to worship God, you have to be mm, right. a certain Come, thing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I've really realized that what qualifies us is Jesus Christ himself. That's yes. it. 
Like, and that is the gospel. That's it. Right. That's the first thing we get when we come into faith. But I think there's something that happens that we kind of get twist turned <laughs> upside <laughs> down. And like, I gotta add to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is in no way to say like, let's be raggedy and let's right. be messy. Right. It's not that, but I've realized as much as I've tried to be good, mm. um, that it's still mm. like not Filthy enough. Rags. Right. <laughs> and I've really seen Jesus show up constantly. And so I've what I've learned about worship is that it really needs to always be filtered through Jesus. I think he is our chief worship leader. That's good. Yeah. That's and good. I have to do it remembering the blood, mm. the sacrifice, the grace, the mercy of God, mm. the kindness of God. And when we do that, I think the Lord is pleased. That's, mm. you know. That's awesome. Great That's answer. good. That's good. I kind of want to go back to the question when Ashley said, what do you think the recipe was for your success? You know, um, and, and I so agree with you when you said you guys just worship. Yeah, you know, they just came um, to worship. That's what I, I was. I was blessed to be able to uh, come to the tour when we came to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it was incredible! It was incredible from <laughs> beginning to end. But even before that, watching you and and Maverick City, it was just we're showing up so that we can worship. And I think that is a gift because a lot of times, us as artists or worshipers or leaders. We can get in the way of what God wants to do. Get in the way, you know, we can be so full of ourselves that we get in the way of what God wants to do in us and through us. And when you show up just for that reason alone, just to worship and to be authentically who you are, who God created you to be, um, I don't know, it's contagious. It's, it's how God moves in such a way that he can touch so many people, you know, which is amazing to me. When we offer what we have to him wholeheartedly, honestly, this is who I am, the good and the bad, you know, and we offer it to him, he takes it and he just does something supernatural, you know. So I, I totally agree with that and I have seen it and it's been a blessing to see. And I pray for you guys all the time. Um, <laughs> all the time, but also, the the diversity mm -hmm. it is the church it is yep. what the church is going to look like mm -hmm. and until we understand that you're not going to find the bible says um unity demands a blessing mm. it demands a blessing and when we come together as one that's the picture of jesus that's the picture that the world needs to see mm -hmm. you know and 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 i love everybody but we're better together. Yeah. You know, yeah. we say that, but it's true because that's the way God designed it. Yeah. And so when you, when you get all the different cultures coming together, offering their gifts, it doesn't get any better than yeah. that. Not at all. You know? Mm -hmm. And so that's why when I came to the concert and I saw all the people worshiping God, again, as much as we love you guys, it was so much more about Jesus than anybody on that stage. And I was just like overwhelmed. I was like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> and to look in the audience and see all the different faces, mm -hmm. all the different ages, right. you know, because we, we, we limit God, but God is unlimited. Yeah. yeah. So you know, true. he's unlimited. So, oh, so it has just been a huge blessing to see how are you handling the success of what has mm -hmm. came about? Is it, <laughs> is it, has it presented any challenges? Has it been easy? Um, I think most recently I've started to experience more of the challenging side of it. And mm -hmm. I think, I mean, you know this more than most, <laughs> like touring and all of that, like running around from yeah. here and there. Like yeah. people it's think that that's glamorous. glamorous. <laughs> yeah, it's <not. laughs> But uh -huh. it's not, no, it's no, not. No. You know, we look cute, but. <laughs> hey, you got the team with you. Okay, me. do you understand? <laughs> um, it's not really glamorous, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, everything has a cost, right? Even mm -hmm. to, to preach the gospel, to do all this stuff, there's a, there's a price to pay. And I think that that's like a first world uh, problem. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I have to sit in a chair for yeah. an hour. Yeah. Get my makeup done. Make right. You don't want to you know? complain about that. Oh, right, wow. you know, right. even though I'm sad, but I, mm -hmm. I think that um, it's it was easy, and I think what keeps it easy is going out and seeing the people's faces. Is seeing. I remember growing up. Do you remember when the it was 
Ooh, I can't remember it fully, but I knew there was like a gospel music uh, TV station that came mm-hmm. out and their thing was it's all gospel mm-hmm. and they played all different types of music mm-hmm. it was like dc mm-hmm. talk yeah. it was yes. um chris tomlin mm-hmm. it was um, hezekiah well, it was everything. like everything and they yeah. were saying it's all gospel and i remember being like hmm? because it was such you know yeah, such a divide. difference yeah. from what you were used and to. so i'm seeing like this is not something that started with maverick i think people in the industry were trying to do this for years and yeah. years and years mm-hmm. people have been trying to come out and sing different types of music it's not just us this is something that god has been trying mm-hmm. to do mm-hmm. but but i think it's hitting us now and why it's, why it's important for the american church is because our church one of our main struggles and issues is racism you got it. and Being prejudice yeah. and segregation that is an issue and mm-hmm. so wherever there's an issue the lord's going to send something that can combat that Good. thing mm-hmm. and for the regions and for the territories right yeah. and so that thing has to be strong and i'm saying that to say it's worth it Mm. It's worth it to see this stuff come down, to actually see people's faces, to see blacks and whites together, yeah. right. to yeah. see <laughs> Asians and Hispanic, like yeah. all together singing the it. same songs, That's right. getting That's with right. each other, even though you know they might not know it, but they're like, <laughs> right. oh, you know, trying to catch on and sing it. It's it's, it really yeah. allows us to come to the table together. So it, for me, and also knowing that it's not me, I did not actually do anything. I feel like the Lord set me up. And what I didn't tell you is when I was in high school, the Lord told me, I think I was 17, mm-hmm. he said, I'm going to use you in some, this is the literal word, I'm going to use you in some sort of civil rights music in the gospel music industry. Hmm. And I did not know because at that point I was just young and I'm like, civil rights, rights we're over that. What is this? We're, you know, we're all free. I didn't, I didn't see anything. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I really believe, and because, you know, living in New York, I didn't see a lot of, you know, it was, it was, it was very, you know, very micro, uh you know. But I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And now when, I, when I'm when i seeing what the Lord is doing Good and how we're getting, I'm like, oh Make God, you really said that. Yeah. Man. You yeah. did the thing. So yes, there are challenges. I think I'm, I'm loving that people are loving the music, that they are worshiping God. Mm-hmm. I got a little tear... Like teary when you were talking about it because I think so many people feel the way about worship they feel about prayer. Like, mm. how do we? How do you pray? Like, mm. how do you? Work? They don't know how to do it, and it feels like there's been this disconnect, yeah. right, between right. like man and God, and we feel like we mm-hmm. need that intercessor, right, right, right. other than right. Christ, we right. need like oh, yeah. a human to do it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like what we're able to do on these nights, and even through the YouTube videos, is like we just model it. And hopefully you sing along you sing and you're along. doing it. You're you know? doing it. I love it. I love it. We'll be back with more of this journey of worship. Don't go away. Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the show. Hey, we are out on tour, the Believe For It tour, and God is doing what he said he would do. And I want to invite you to come out. So come out. If we're coming near you, please come and worship with me. See you soon. Welcome back to Generations. I am having a blast getting to know this incredible young lady, Naomi <laughs> Rain. Naomi. <laughs> what a name. Rain. It's a great, right? it's a great name. Um, I normally start with the scripture, but I'm going to do this scripture right now. And I'm going to read Psalm 56, 16. It says, but I will sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress and a refuge in the day of my distress. And um, it it is an honor and a privilege to to worship God and to give him praise. Mm -hmm. And we were talking during the commercial about the unity and what you felt about what God is doing for you guys and why. Can you you share that with them? Yeah, I was acknowledging, I think most people feel un- qualified, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And because of what we believe unqual- like that we're unqualified to do, we think that that disqualifies us mm. from mm-hmm. being blessed by God. Right. And right. I don't think that that's true. I'm mm-hmm. just learning who mm-hmm. he is. And so it's been amazing to me. We are literally in shock every day. Yeah. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Like, mm. why do people want to come and worship and and do this together? Like, literally, we're off the heels of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, where nobody's supposed to get it. And then with this monkey I don't know. Right. But, right. but right. people are saying, hey, it's worth it to come. Yeah. You know, and to yeah. see yeah. what God is doing. And so I just feel like God has, like, 
blessed us immensely, mm-hmm. but it's not about us not about or you, right? our, our goodness or our, you mm-hmm. know, any of that. It's just like, yo, let's come together and let's do this together. And I think that community is where the mm-hmm. Lord does his work. And I, th- yeah. I'm com- I think it's combating the lie that the enemy has tried to feed us mm-hmm. about like, hey, be to yourself Isolate. or just, mm-hmm. you know, right. go on YouTube and attend church. Right. Like, that's not, mind that's you. That's not his way. Hello? Mm-hmm. Come on. Like, we, all of this social media, well, it's beautiful. It's a great tool, but it can't replace really? community and us coming together. It serves the purpose. The sake, not replace. the assembly of yourselves. Mm-hmm. You right? come together. It's, he yeah. shows up in, a, in the most powerful way when we come together. Yeah. And that's intentional. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And you can't deny the way he showed up. If we were together, right. it's not it's not my yeah, it's not just my just work. We both saw it happen together. Go. Right. There so you when go. the Holy Spirit comes and descends Absolutely. on those people in the upper room, yeah. you can't deny yeah. what happened because people, Witnesses. thousands yeah. of people there you experience go. the same thing at the same there time. You go. And I believe God is showing his power. He's showing how he's moving because it all happened and we were all there yeah. and we all sort we have an eyewitness yeah. account yeah. of yeah. what God is doing. That's mm-hmm. good. That's good. Awesome. It, 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 he just keeps me in awe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when he does it, you know that it's him. It was mm-hmm. him. And even speaking of you guys' concert, again, I was blown away by all the different gifts and the talents. Uh, but, w- but when I left, I, I continued in the presence of God. His mm. presence was the biggest thing. Mm. Oh, and as a worshiper, that's all you want. That's it. You know, when mm, people to come mm. in that they just remember him. Yeah. Because that's that's the thing that's going to follow people home and yeah. actually bring them out of dark places and, yeah. and bring forth healing and hope. All the things as gospel singers and mm-hmm. as ministers of the gospel or as believers, you don't have to have a microphone. Right. Um, but, but we carry this light and when we come together and worship God in spirit and in truth, with that just means sincerity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, then, then he's able to do the impossible, you know? And then, like you said, people give you the al- accolades, but it's like, yeah. okay, I'll take it, but <laughs> right. I really had nothing to do <laughs> with this. What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> I showed up. We, and, and that's it. And I feel like if you <laughs> like what you see me doing, just do that. Just right. show up <laughs> and worship yeah. him. Because I think, you know, there is a thing. It's like that, like, follow me as I follow Christ right. thing, right? right. Like, right. well, okay, mm-hmm. if you guys are impressed, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> well, all I did was worship and I just try to do what he says. Now, I'm not perfect, but mm-hmm. let's just do that. And I think... To me, it's most important that we just promote Jesus. We're not right. promoting ourselves yes. as good as, you know, right. anything or yeah, these, you know, know, saints. I mean, mind you, we are. Yeah. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's yeah. the connotation of it, right? Yeah. We're all saints, the believers mm-hmm. in, in Christ. We're all saints. We're all holy and being sanctified right. every single day. But right. it's not me. And I remember, like, reading in the book of Acts, when men would encounter the disciples and the apostles, they would want to worship them. And they would right. go, uh-uh, no, no, we're no, no, just no, no. mere That's men. That's right. Don't worship like, don't worship me, right, me. Right. worship no, no, God. No. And I think that's what the Lord mm-hmm. wants. Like a mm-hmm. generation of people that go, okay, yes, I know you see something on me, but it's not me, it's right. him. Mm-hmm. And if you want that, mm-hmm. yeah. just right. have yeah. at him. Like, yeah. 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 Here he is, you know? <laughs> yeah. There you he's go. Good. And he, he's for all of us. So how would you define worship? How do I define mm-hmm. worship? I, I think it's like putting the focus on the Lord. Because I think, you know, you hear praise and worship together. I think mm-hmm. praise is one thing. I do think worship is, it should kind of be like everything revolves around God. Mm-hmm. I, I, I use the analogy once of like, if, if you said I worship football, that means my whole life is just saturated. Mm-hmm. It's, I'm all about football. Mm-hmm. So I think if I worship God, it means my whole life is about God. It's about pleasing God. And I think praise is a part of worship. Definitely. I think we praise God and we we magnify and we lift him up. But I do think, kind of like what she was saying earlier, how she watched her parents, it's the lifestyle that has to support what worship is. So I, that's okay. how I define it. I, okay. I think of worship about, as like, I, I focus on him. Okay. All right. What about you? How, how would you define worship? I would take that and raise you. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I think it's just whatever we give. I think it's a giving and laying down of our lives for God. It's basically the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's how we 
honor him with our lives, with our every every day. And I used to say this because I hate washing the dishes. I'd be like, <laughs> when I wash the dishes, that's an act of worship, worship. <laughs> to the Lord because I know it blesses yeah. others mm -hmm. and it glorifies God. So anything for me that brings glory to God mm -hmm. um, is worship and anything that is an act of obedience to him, yeah, right, where I sacrifice, sacrifice something and lay it down, even if it even if it doesn't hurt, you know, but I think it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it does hurt. It counts. Hurt. Yeah. yeah. If it hurts a little bit. It counts. Yeah. I think that's worship. Yeah. I mean, How do I, you I, define worship? I mean, I just think, um, I think worship is, is definitely, it, it's got to be wholehearted. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of times we offer God what we think is worship, but it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. um, because he, he's always after the heart. Mm -hmm. He's always after the heart. You know, we can speak something with our lips, but if it's not in the heart, you know, and so I think worship is just coming before him, but giving him your whole heart mm -hmm. because he's God. He deserves only your best. He mm -hmm. deserves everything. He requires everything. Yeah. Worship requires everything. Full <laughs> surrender. Yeah, full yeah. surrender. Like you say, your whole life is yeah. a lifestyle. It's not... We, we we carry worship through our singing, mm -hmm. but but worship is is adoring him every day. Yeah you know, and loving on him. Uh, you, t you touched on it earlier about prophetic singing. I want you mm -hmm. to share more about, you know, discovering that God gave you that gift, but also operating in that gift. Yeah, I, it, it started in that Presbyterian church. Wow. Um, many years ago, I would just be singing and then the Lord would start saying things that I knew, like I wasn't just making know. this up. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember these words to the song. <laughs> but you know, he would be dropping things and as I would sing it, mm -hmm. um, people would respond or the 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 service would yeah, shift. Yeah, the atmosphere, You Come know, on. the atmosphere would mm -hmm. shift and what was ordinarily a more stuffy um, mm -hmm. environment yeah. became free. It's like the ceiling wow. would just go up two feet, you know, or 10 feet. Mm -hmm. um, and the Lord started to just like train me in his voice. I think for me, that was a, a moment of training, mm -hmm. but I started to learn about prophetic worship that God didn't just want our rehearsed songs yeah, or the songs that we had written um, so previously, good. but right. that he would also like a uh, more spontaneous and free, yeah. um, free flowing worship. Mm -hmm. And that it wasn't just what we were giving to him, but this was now almost like a portal where he mm -hmm. could now speak Bless to us. Yeah. And it was a ministry tool. That's good. That's and so I'm good. like, oh snap, because I just thought worship at first was just you know, like yeah. prophetic worship or worship was just upward, but I realized, oh, this is this is a portal. Down this is a place to. where he can speak to us. Mm, and um that's good. I now when I go out before I sing, I, I always say, like, Lord, what do you want to hear tonight? Mm -hmm. And Lord, what do you want to say? That's um good. and I think the more that we kind of move in more prophetic worship, people get what they need. I, I remember being, I can't remember where I was. I think I was in Texas, but I was in a room one day and the Lord said, if one person walks out of here, then the sound will change. He said, mm. what's happening in this moment will never happen again. This is a unique moment. Mm. And he helped me to start seeing each moment that we encounter the Lord and we yeah. gather together yeah. as a unique opportunity for him to speak and for him to receive something that he would not receive any other time. That's a great And it point. put like an urgency and um, a weight on the moment. Because yeah. you know, sometimes you can just be like, oh, yeah. another day, we're just yeah, sitting there. You're just doing it. No. No. Every this moment. is a, a unique, unique serious wow. moment. And so how do we steward that and I think it's through the yeah. prophetic it's through the gifts and we know that prophets and prophetic ministry is meant to edify, edify. and build and encourage the church right and so when we move and operate in prophetic worship and prophetic singing right um and even prophetic playing mm -hmm. we give the holy spirit an opportunity to build and edify his give church with those mm -hmm. that he's called to do that right mm -hmm. and so there are people that are called um in market like we're all supposed to go out and preach the gospel but right. there are people that are called to the church to build and edify the church in these different graces that the lord has given the church and i believe the prophetic is a major one mm -hmm. and we should be singing um, prophetically, no, yeah. no weight, you know, no <laughs> weight and burden, but it's something that I think we should pray for yeah, to, to you should move pray in for more. Yeah, more, you know? yeah. I, I love that. I love that. That is so, so good. My thing is, how do you stay in that mindset? Because, like you said, it's so easy to get into the routine mm -hmm. of stuff. And I love when you just said, every time you, well, I don't want to answer the question for you. <laughs> so, how do you stay in that in that mindset to understand that every moment counts? 
I mean, for me, if I'm honest, I think it's something the Lord constantly reminds me of. Good. I wish I could say, you know, I'm the best at remembering all the things. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I think the Lord will, will remind you when you're called to it. I think that God has graced me to do that. And so when I go out, I'm after that. I'm after that go. moment. And not go. like not like a junkie seeking a high, yeah. but no, I, I want to know, mean. like, Lord, what do you want to say? And so yeah. it's it's literally, like Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they won't follow. When you know him, you you mm-hmm. know what he likes, you know, yeah. you get to know him. And this is, this is actually a relationship. Yeah, I know so who he is and I, oh, that sounds like it's about me, but it's not. Mm-hmm. Like when you know him, you know what he likes, you know what he mm-hmm. wants and you want to please him. And I think in those moments, um, being sure of what he wants to do and that people have a need for his voice mm-hmm. um, and that he still is using people, yes. right? That we have an opportunity to um, to minister and bless people with what the Lord wants to say. It's like, God, I want you to use me. Mm-hmm. Y'all can listen to a YouTube video of me sing this song Come anytime. On. Anytime. Mm-hmm. You know, right. but there's something that happens when we in sing person. it afresh. Even our voices, even the sound that we have and that mm-hmm. we carry <laughs> in a moment. Ha- the Lord is using that in a moment. Oh, yeah, about to, I'm about to like... Come on, yeah. come on. <laughs> But to me, that's what I'm after. I want I want him to have his way in the room. And Mm -hmm. I know there might be someone that needs a healing, that needs a touch, that needs encouragement, that needs to be reminded of who he is, that we need to be strengthened as a body to not give up. Right. right? And that's what we see in the epistles. We see these um the apostles writing letters to the churches to encourage them to keep with it, to stay with the faith, to remember who Jesus is. That is what we're called to do. And so in those moments, I'm chasing it. And you can ask Chan and all of them. They they be sick of me because I'm like, no, we got you know we have to go after what yeah, he wants to do in this good, in this moment in this and moment. you know yeah. I will, I will hopefully prayerfully I will live my life um, doing that for yeah. the rest of my life yeah. um, and glorifying him you that's know so good. That's, that's the purpose yeah, that's yeah. It. That's and, so but good. what you're saying is so important that because this is God's heart this is his desire right and he's always there. But he's waiting for us to invite him in. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we all remember that the Holy Spirit is with you. And there's so many things that he wants to do, whether it's prophetic singing, whatever he's telling you to do. But you have to invite him in. And when you say you're chasing that, this is what this is what I'm after. He's going to show up every single time. Absolutely. Because he loves his people, you know, Mm -hmm. and he's just looking for a vessel that's chasing after him. Mm -hmm. I just thought of that scripture. It's like, I've tasted and seen that you are good. Good. Like, when I, okay, I told you I'm passionate about food. Yeah. But when I like taste or have something really good, I want other people to experience experience it. Come on. Like, ooh, girl, you gotta, (laughs) right. (laughs) I want you to experience this. And I think that's a part of it. It's like, Oh, I know that there's no other answer. There's, there's no, no other, answer. other cure. Right. And no even other when we Come don't on. get the things that we want, there's nothing that satisfies like his nothing. presence. Nothing there's comes absolutely close. Absolutely nothing. On. You know, and I might want some of those things, right? right that right, don't satisfy. Right, but right. when we really get down to it, <laughs> there's nothing that satisfies like there's his presence. Nothing. And mm-hmm. I think as minister of the gospel, that is our almost a part of our duty is to invite people into tasting and seeing. Yeah, that's, that's why we, yeah, that's what we do that's it awesome. for. So other people can can know his goodness and his love and his mercy. And uh wow, I'm so glad you're here. I'm <laughs> yeah. so glad I'm so glad you're here, but I'm so glad that you're here, that you're in the industry, that you're mm-hmm. in the world sharing your gift and and allowing people to experience his presence. I just think that is so awesome. I'm so happy about you. Oh, I'm happy yes. for you and I'm happy about you. And tell us about, about you. your new project. Yeah, tell us about journey. your new journey. Yeah, the journey, the new project. The journey. Yes. Is, this your, journey. is this your first solo record? Not in real life. Not in real life. So okay. for fake. Um, okay. <laughs> this is your first one on this level. Yes. This. Okay, mm-hmm. you got it. So a few years ago, the Lord, I was in prayer and I was praying like one of those really like corporate and pretty prayers like, and God, I know you're going to do this because you're God. Like I was like really <laughs> giving it everything. And he's like, okay, but when are you going to tell me how you feel? And I'm like, but I did. I'm, I feel faith and you're going to do the things. And he's like, no, I, you've still come in, coming into my presence with your loincloth on. And mm. I want to remove that. You're still ashamed of how you feel, of what's happened. And you're still covering up. Come into my presence and be like 100%. Mm-hmm. And so 
I was like, okay. And he started to give me songs and he, he gave me a vision for this project. It was supposed to be a double project um, called Journey Back to Eden. And so Back to Eden would be like the, the corporate worship music and Journey was like the behind the scenes, like the Monday through Saturday yeah. um, type of stuff that the Lord walks you through, the real worship, right? The uh -huh. actually give, actual giving of your life. Um, I was able to release back, the Back to Eden part, but the Lord didn't have me to release Journey. And I believe it was because I wasn't ready. I didn't mm. actually mm. go through all the things. Um, but about maybe two, three years later, post pandemic and all the things, the Lord has allowed me to release Journey. And Journey is that Monday through Saturday, like walking with Jesus, real life, mm -hmm. like stop being fake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, accept what you're, what the reality actually is. You can't repent if you don't know what you're repenting of. Right. And I think I, because I was such a church girl and grew up, I had learned how to just be good rather mm -hmm. than actually allow him to wash me and, purify, and process, yeah, process process me and purify me. I was just like, oh Lord, yeah, do the things. Okay, good. Yes, I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. I was an actor, you mm. know? And so the Lord has like get, taken me through a process where I can actually present my real self to him and trust that his blood is covering like me. Not the, you know, mm -hmm. right. not the cute, really, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, <laughs> not cute me. Um, just the the actual me and mm -hmm. the one that I that that I am when I go to sleep and wake up. You know, those mm -hmm. people are different than the one we put on to, mm -hmm. to face the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so Journey is that project, and I am super proud of it. Um, it's not a worship album in genre, mm -hmm. um, you know, in mm -hmm. genre, mm -hmm. but it is a worship album in heart and in spirit, and it deals with stuff, um, a bunch of relationship um issues and things and marriage and friendships and okay so um, it's more of a mainstream record kind of yeah but you okay. know it's still about jesus <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I, well, gotta, I gotta sit down and listen to this journey <laughs> take this journey <laughs> she said a little about jesus you okay <laughs> all right so so what's next for you i mean i know you just got off tour you have journey yeah, out there what's next um yeah i heard about something you're about to do so what's what's next yeah so i'm about to record a worship project um mm -hmm. in a few days wow. um, because apparently we don't stop working over here but mm -hmm. it's something the lord told me actually to be urgent about mm. to to put it out um Wow. Glory to God. Um, I'm going to keep going as long as I can. I do feel like the, this is a time where I'm supposed to plant and work. And Percent. then there'll be a time where I get to rest. I, there will be vacations. So I know some people are worried. They're like, yeah, me, I just yeah. want you. You know, you I'm going to get home, it. have a few days. Yeah, but I'm I'm back, you know, <laughs> back to the things. Okay. I'm not a workaholic or anything. I just... Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. You know, Everybody point towards this never. way. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I receive it though. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm You gotta balance it. You yes, gotta balance it. Gotta, gotta balance, balance it. it. And you know, we might go out on tour again another few dates. Um and Maverick after that, City? Yeah, Map okay. City and then Hey, it's 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 amazing. So I know it's yeah. I'm sure There's a grace for it, yeah. but mm -hmm. Hello. It's a lot. This yeah. rest is going to be real nice. This vacation. Uh huh. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a nice crazy. So, season. so you work on it. So you're going to do a live project, mm -hmm. worship record. Yes. You have a new record out, the journey, yes. and then Mavs, um, Maverick City or Mav City, whatever y'all call it, Mav. How do you um, feel? <laughs> might come out and do some more dates. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Yay. everybody wants it. it. It's powerful. So, so so exciting. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for we're having so us. We're so excited for you, and we love you, and we're cheering you on. Would you do us a favor? Um, anything you want to sing? You know, our, our producers around here is is having a fit right now. Anything you want to sing? You want to yeah, a song on your heart? Ashley, is there a song on your heart? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> Oh wow! I was the Lord was really telling me you had something. <laughs> Come on, Naomi. I feel like the only thing I'll just sing what I'm thinking. Okay. It's just the it's just the bridge from promises. I just okay. keep hearing that. Yeah. Um, um, I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation He'll never let me down, no I put my faith in Jesus yes. My anchor to the 
ground my hope and firm foundation he'll never let me down he'll never let me down Woo! love it so good so, so rich. Never so let rich. you down. He'll never let you down. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're That's so good. So good. <laughs> Who needs music? Who no. needs music? <laughs> right. We love you. Keep worshiping God. Give him all of your heart. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There's nothing like his presence right now. Nothing at all. Get in his presence. We love you. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to click like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.